Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about driving examiners. And this is for, for both first license and for your CDL license, whether you're going to become a truck or bus driver. All the same information applies for all the classes of license. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there Smart Drivers, welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about driving examiners. And Corey is here, Bricks for Wheels. Corey is the moderator and does an awesome job at getting up the videos for you that I suggest that you have a look at for more information as well. Corey has been successful. He's moved into the second stage of the uh, applying for the Transit Authority to become a bus driver where he lives there. And congratulations to Corey on getting to the second stage. That's really awesome. And Maxi asked me about driving examiners. Yes, sir. Big teeth, you know, hair, spiky hair. You know, they wear leather jackets with big spikes on it. And, the, and their job is just to fail you. That's all they want to do. No, they are not ogres. For the most part, uh, driving examiners are people just like you and me. Uh, they have their bad days. Yes, they do. And for the most part, you know, like everything else in life, there's the... 90 10 rule sometimes they are bad and sometimes they do fail you uh but most of the time when you fail a road test i would say in probably 97 percent of cases you weren't ready for your road test and that's the hard truth of it in three percent of cases something went wrong that the student was not yet able to deal with in terms of what was happening on the roadway so that does happen every now and again but for the most part it doesn't happen if you fail and the driving examiner gives you feedback because at the end regardless of whether you pass or fail the road test the driving examiner will give you a bit of feedback and the feedback that they give you is not comprehensive what I mean by that is is that there are a whole bunch of other reasons that you failed your road test the driving examiner only has so much time to give you feedback so he or she only picks one or two things to give you feedback on about the reasons why you failed. So, lots of people here. Uh, if you're just tuning in, let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know what class of license you're going for and we'll be able to help you out. More than happy to answer questions. Jonathan's here. Jonathan is really great at answering questions. Jonathan drives a uh, bus there in New York City and has lots of great information. Uh, Rika is going for a road test next month. Awesome. Mary waiting for the video. Mary's here as well. Alex how to pass the road test for truck drivers. Uh, all the information is more or less the same. And Alex, are you currently in CDL truck driver school? Let me know there in the comments. Mete, how can I uh, left turn on Boulevard without hesitation? Uh, Mete, Corey will put the video up for you on how to turn left. Have a look at that. That will definitely help you out and give you lots of great information about how to turn left. Uh, Jola, how do you feel more relaxed when taking a road test exam? Uh, we're going to give you some of that information today. Uh, Jola asked me that question again at the end of the presentation, and we'll go over that information. Katie's here studying for her road test. Bila, hello. Devin, going for your road test on Thursday. Good luck on that. Uh, Carrie, here in Minnesota, just got six inches of snow on Friday. Went to the parking lot with a family member to practice driving in with a bit of snow. That must have been good fun then. Awesome. Uh, Corey got the video up for you. Excellent. And Devin is going for his graduated license there in New Brunswick. Brenda's got her road test on the 6th of March. Awesome. So everybody's here. Really great. Lots of great information. So we're going to get over to the slideshow here without further ado and get going on that. So driving examiners, their job and your job. What is your job and what is the driving examiner's job? That is what we're talking about. And who is the driving examiner? Last week we talked about mentors and driving instructors. Driving instructors are people like me who are professional instructors who go in the vehicle with you and teach you how to drive. Whether that's a truck, drive, a truck driving instructor, a bus driving instructor, or a car instructor. Most of you going for your new first license are going to be working with car driving instructors. Mentors, uh, most of you uh, getting your first license are going to be in a GLP or a GDL program. Those are the same thing. They're graduated licensing programs or uh, graduated driver's licensing programs. They have two stages. They have a learner stage where you do a written test. You have a learner's license and you have to drive 
with an experienced driver and that can vary depending on which state you're in or which province you're in where you are in the world whether you're in Australia and Europe and other places like that but those are the phases that you have to contend with regardless of where you are in the world uh, in those phases so you do the learner's test and then you have to driver's license to go into the novice phase the novice phase for a minimum of two years and then you go for another road test to get your full license and I encourage you to get your full license as quickly as possible uh, because if you don't first you're under more restrictions uh, because you're in the GL, you're still in the GLP program but second you're gonna pay more for insurance because you're still seen as a novice driver all right for those of you new to smart drive test my name is Rick August I do have a PhD in legal history which is a study of policing courts and prisons and my expertise is in uh, policing as it relates to <coughs> to traffic excuse me just taking a drink of water there so in 1997 I became a licensed commercial driving instructor and I've been doing that for a long time <laughs> you know you're getting old when you can start speaking in decades and while I was going to university in Australia I drove coaches for Greyhound and uh, Australians are fond of saying that they uh, started Greyhound or founded Greyhound I never actually went to check that out but anyway that's what they say and you can check out my full autobiography over at the website and Corey will put up the link for that as well all right new video this week I'm beginning to do training for uh, CDL drivers and I'm kind of starting at the beginning if you're thinking about doing a career to work as a truck or bus driver uh, these are the questions you need to ask driving schools because not all driving schools are created equal <laughs> not in any stretch of the imagination so to get the best training for your money have a look at this video here and this will tell you the five top questions that you need to ask a truck driving school to get the training the best training for your money so have a look at that all right so the driving examiner's job this is the person when you go to the DOT you go to the MTO the CBSC no not the CBSC the ICBC here in uh, British Columbia uh, these are the people who are going to test you these are the people that are gonna sit in the car with you with their little clipboard and they're gonna write on their little clipboard about whether you pass or fail and there's two ways that you can pass or fail a road test uh, there's two ways rather that you can fail a road test one way is is that automatic fail you commit a dangerous action and you fail the road test the second way is you can demerit out most road tests for new road tests are going to be 25 points and for a commercial license it's going to be 35 or 45 depending on which class of license you're going for truck driving uh, you're allowed 45 demerits before you're unsuccessful on your road test so those are the two ways you can fail your road test now you want to be successful obviously you want to go for your road test the first time and you want to pass so do everything in your power to pass that test the driving examiner's job is to assess that you have the ability to control the vehicle in changing traffic conditions that you can respond accordingly to changing traffic conditions so that's the job of the driving instructor your job is to take away their right to fail you in other words your job as a student taking a driving test is to demonstrate to the examiner that you have due care and control of the vehicle in changing traffic conditions that's all you need to do it's nothing less nothing more that's all you need to do to pass your road test okay so first impressions what are the first impressions uh, that you make when you're at the driving school <laughs> when you show up so you show up with a dirty car uh, the footwells are full of uh, fast food wrappers from whomever was driving the car and went through the drive through at Burger King and uh, you know they can't get the door open because the door is locked uh, you know you didn't brush your teeth for three days you didn't comb your hair uh, you didn't put on deodorant because you know you've been so stressed out about the test and whatnot and the examiner comes out takes one look at you and goes oh oh that's bad oh that's bad okay so you don't get a second chance to make a first impression so do everything you need to do to be successful on your road test and I'll tell you a story the first five minutes of the road test is mega important okay mega important the driving examiner just met you did their little pre-trip inspection and then they got in the car with you and you did everything right then they can relax they're like oh, okay this person knows how to drive and I'll tell you a comparable story about this when I was driving coach for Greyhound I went into the terminal 
and the terminal where we picked up the passengers and loaded the luggage was inside. So I backed up, <laughs> dumped the clutch, stalled the bus. Okay, so that was the first thing that happened. Then I drove out of the inside of the building and you came right out to the sidewalk. Somebody stepped out in front of me right on the sidewalk as I was coming out of the building. And I, I jammed on the brakes, rocked every passenger in the bus. And then <laughs> after being rattled within 30 minutes of you know stalling the bus and jamming on the brakes, then I drove out, made a right-hand turn, which is a left-hand turn in Australia, and uh, drove up over the curb with the rear wheels of the bus because I was so rattled. And this was the overnight run between Melbourne and Sydney and not a single person on that bus slept the entire way <laughs> from Melbourne to Sydney for the 11 hours that it took to drive from Melbourne to Sydney because they were all freaked out that I couldn't drive. <laughs> However, every time that I drove bus, if I got it right the first five minutes of the bus ride, everybody else after that was completely asleep, sleeping away soundly and whatnot because they trusted me and believe that I could drive. It's the same thing with your road test. If you get the first five minutes right, then the driving examiner is going to relax, you're going to relax, and the rest of the test is probably gonna go swimmingly, unless you do you know, a dangerous action. But you need to nail the first five minutes, and that has to do with first impression. So wash the car, get all the garbage out of the car, vacuum it out, make sure that everything works. And that's the next piece uh, on this is, um, actually this, I'm getting ahead of myself, uh, do a pre-trip inspection on the vehicle before you show up for a road test. This is imperative. I cannot stress this enough. I've had a number of people in the last few months say to me that they were denied a road test because something didn't work. The seatbelt on the passenger side didn't work. They had a brake light out or whatnot. Uh, all these things can be repaired if you do a pre-trip inspection before you show up for your road test. I can't stress this enough and Corey will put the video up for you as well on this in terms of doing a pre-trip inspection before you show up for your road test, okay? So do the pre-trip inspection, vacuum the, uh, the vehicle out, clean the vehicle, uh, put nice clothes on, wash your hair, brush your teeth, you know, do your makeup, shave for the, for the men and the women and not, you know, not interchangeably, but you know what I'm saying. So this is what you need to do to be successful on your road test, okay? Miss of passing a road test. Okay, some of the myths that are passed around. Don't wear sunglasses, okay? Rubbish. Lots of driving instructors will say, oh, the driving examiner wants you to see you move your eyes. Baloney. That is that's bunk. It's not true, okay? I am very photosensitive. If, it's, if the sun is shining out, I'm squinting like a crazy person. So I have to wear sunglasses in bright sunlight. If you have to wear sunglasses in bright, sunglass, in, in bright sunlight, take your sunglasses, wear your sunglasses, okay? Don't engage in conversation. The rule for that is, if the examiner wants to engage in conversation, then engage in conversation. But otherwise, just remain calm and focus on what you're doing. Okay? Uh, examiners work to fail you. Simply not true. Many, many, most people, I would say 80%, 85% of people here on the Smart Drive Test channel pass first time. Okay? Uh, examiners have a quota. Not true. And uh, you don't have to speak English uh Perfectly. None of that is true. These are all myths in terms of driving examiners and being successful on passing your road test. All right. To be successful on a road test, you also want to know road signs at a glance. Okay. Lisa is here. Hello, Lisa, my friend. Uh, failing to adjust speed according to signs. Okay. You need to be reading road signs. You need to adjust your speed accordingly. The speed for the purposes of a road test is the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. And people ask me what the tolerance is on their speed limit, how much above and how much below. It's not really that. You have to understand that observation and speed management work in concert. And what I'm saying is, is that you have a scanning pattern. You're scanning far down the road in the vehicle, the center mirror, far down the road, instrument panel, far down the road in your two wing mirrors. And that is repeated every 12 to 15 seconds. If you're not adjusting your speed within 10 to 12 seconds, that's telling the examiner that you're not observing correctly and therefore are missing a, a fundamental component of safe driving skills. So it's you're gonna have a tough time passing. So road signs, late end signs, stop signs, school zone signs, road markings, you need to pay attention to all of this Otherwise, it's gonna to be tough for you to predict traffic patterns 
and be proactive in your driving and demonstrating to the examiner that you have due care and control of your vehicle. So understand the importance of passing a road test. Lisa, this is for every license. This doesn't matter which license test you're taking for. G2, G, uh, full license, commercial license, this will apply to all of the license tests that you could possibly think of taking, okay? It's a very uh, high level, not a high level, but it's, you know, road tests aren't that different. They're all pretty much the same. There's some different nuances, and there's definitely gonna be some different nuances about where you take your test. And this is the other thing about being successful on your road test, practice in and around the test center at the time that you're going to be taking your, re your road test. So if you're gonna be taking it on a Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning, make sure that you're practicing in and around the test center at 10 o'clock in the morning. That way you're going to simulate the traffic as best you can. And remember, you can only drive out about 10 minutes and then come back 10 minutes. Okay, and while I'm on that point, I'm gonna make that point about road test length durations. How long is the road test? It's gonna depend where you are. In New York City, for example, a road test is only eight to 10 minutes. If you're in the province of Ontario, depending on what city you're in, it can be anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. But most road tests for passenger vehicles are going to be uh, kind of that 15 to 20 minutes, okay? Unless, like I said, you're in New York, then it's gonna be eight minutes. If you're in someplace else, it might be longer, okay? CDL licenses, tractor trailer licenses are two and a half hours. If you're in a bus or a dump truck, it's probably gonna be about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes. If you're in a small van or an ambulance, it's probably gonna be about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, so those are the different lengths of road tests that you could potentially take. Uh, Martina, do I have to completely stop at T intersections even if there's no stop sign? No, if there's a yield sign, you don't have to come to a complete stop unless you're giving way to other traffic, all right? So for the purposes of a road test, and this pertains to uh, passenger vehicles, remember, seven eighths of the road test is in a forward motion, one eighth is slow speed maneuvers, reversing and doing uh, these parallel parking, three point turn, reverse stall parking, backing into a parking space. You have to be able to do these. <laughs> and it is very important that you spend some time in the parking lot working with the pylons so that you know uh, where your vehicle is in space and place and that you have mastery of the primary controls. Lots of people have grief around the parallel parking, okay? Tons of grief around parallel parking. They hate parallel parking to the point that some people will never do it again in their entire driving career. The point of parallel parking is to demonstrate to the examiner in a very short period of time whether you have due care and control of the vehicle in changing traffic conditions and slow speed maneuvers will make you a better driver overall, okay? And this is the very thing, even with uh, new drivers, commercial drivers. If I have a commercial driver that's having trouble backing up or I have a truck, truck, <laughs> truck driving student who's having difficulty hooking up to the trailer, guess what I get them to do? I get them to do slow speed maneuvers. I get them to back the vehicle around a corner. I get them to back up in straight lines. I get them to back up in a serpentine and all kinds of slow speed exercises that will teach them where their vehicle is in space and place. And for commercial drivers, as you get to bigger vehicles, whether you're driving a cargo van or you're driving a minivan or you're driving an SUV, you're driving a bus, an ambulance, whatever it is, you're gonna have to use learn how to use the mirrors. So. Slow speed maneuvers will also teach you how to use the mirrors, how to back up, how to turn the steering wheel, how to observe and work this, the primary controls, the steering wheel, the throttle, and the brake in tandem with looking in the mirrors because that can be a bit weird uh, when you're learning how to drive, okay? So that's the other thing and that's the importance of slow speed maneuvers. All right, so Lisa's taking her G2 in Winchester, Ontario. Uh, Martina's in Boston, excellent. Uh, New Brunswick, Devin is in New Brunswick, awesome. So people here, awesome. All right, so for slow speed maneuvers for car, at minimum, parallel parking, reverse stall parking, you have to back into a parking space, and three point turn. Those are the absolute minimums that you're gonna have to do for a road test. All the rest of it is discretionary. What I mean by discretionary is it depends on the examiner and how he or she is feeling that day, okay? 
They might get you to park along a curb. They might get you to do a two-point reverse turn. Uh, what else could they get you to do? Um, they could get you to, in California, they have a specific test for those of you watching in California, watching on the replay. Uh, if they're watching in California, they get you to back up for about 10 car lengths along a curb on a road. Okay, Ohio, the state of Ohio in the U.S. has its own Ohio maneuverability test. And it's basically five cones, you drive through the box, and then you either have to drive right or left of the nose cone. And Corey will put both of those uh, videos up for you as well for slow speed maneuvers and uh, for the purposes of uh, road test. Okay, lane positioning. Have a look at the lane changing video. Uh, move to the right or left after turning. Yes, absolutely. When you make a left-hand turn, you have to move back over to the right, okay? For those of you driving on the left side of the road, uh, you make a right-hand turn, you have to move back over to the left. And you have to do that without the examiner telling you, okay? You just do it automatically. The only time that you don't is as if the examiner says to you in two blocks, I want you to turn left again, then stay in the left-hand lane. All right? Uh, when you're turning on multi-lane roads, left to left, right to right. Okay, merging, lane changing, moving, uh, you're moving the vehicle laterally, you have to communicate. And I'll talk about the four fundamental components of a road test that you have to have in place. It doesn't matter if you're driving a passenger vehicle or you're driving a commercial vehicle. It's the same for both. Okay, and somehow I gotta get rid of that slide. <laughs> okay, so we talked about this briefly in the introduction. The driving examiner is going to assess competency it's going to uh, he or she is going to assess your ability to drive the vehicle so there's two ways you can fail the test you either accumulate too many demerits so passenger vehicles it's going to be 25 points commercial vehicles is going to be 45 points uh bus and dump truck 35 points and then it, you know somewhere in the middle there <coughs> and it's going to vary a little bit obviously about where you are in the world about how many points you uh how many points you accumulate okay pass fail and then at the end of it the driving examiner is going to give you some feedback about whether you passed or failed and things that you may or may not have to work on all right so good luck on your road test and remember pick the best answer not necessarily the right answer and basically what we'll do uh transition back there we go okay so Aria, but you don't have to give license. Okay, so let's see. What do we got? Katie, will it count against me if the examiner asks me to make a right turn and I explain what I'm doing while I during the exam? Okay, excellent point, Katie. Yes, running commentary to learn faster while you're driving. Do a running commentary, okay? Do exactly what you're doing. For example, if the driving examiner says to you, okay, at the next controlled intersection, I want you to turn right. Controlled intersections are stop signs, yield signs, traffic lights, okay? If those, ex those conditions exist, it's a controlled intersection. So you're gonna say, I'm positioning my vehicle to the right of my lane, I'm signaling, I'm shoulder checking, checking the mirror, and you're coming up, I'm going to stop because the traffic light is red. The traffic light is red. I've stopped at the correct stopping positions at the intersection. I'm waiting for pedestrians to clear the crosswalk. There are uh, cars coming through the intersection. I'm The pedestrians are clear. I'm moving forward. You can move over the crosswalk to make sure the traffic is clear because you can turn on the right, except for those of you in New York City and the five boroughs, you can't turn right on a red light and any time that a sign prohibits it. You'd also say there's no sign prohibiting me turning right on a red light. You move forward, the way is clear. I proceed, I'm looking in the direction, the path of travel that I wanna go. I'm canceling my signal and I'm looking where I wanna go and I'm straightening the steering wheel out. So you can do all of that running commentary. I know that's a lot for the right hand turn, but you can do that and that will help you uh, not only to pass the road test because the driving examiner is not now trying to guess what you're doing, okay? So, and it will help you in terms of being ready for the road test. So talk yourself through it, okay? You're not a crazy person if you're doing that. It's actually an incredibly smart learning uh, strategy and technique that you can use, all right? Okay, so uh, Jolia said that it's 30 points that you demerit out in New York, okay? So excellent. And uh, Maxi uh, is down to test center tough for G2 test. All right, okay, I want to dispel this myth about test centers being tough. It's not a test center that's tough. You're not ready, okay? 
if if the examiners if you've done everything that you need to do if you've been practicing consistently through your learners phase and you come up to your road test and you've been practicing and doing the work that you need to do you've taken a couple of road tests or uh, driving lessons with a driving instructor you're going to be successful on your road test if you waited until six to eight weeks before your road test date to start to learn how to drive then it's not likely you're gonna pass your road test. I'm sorry, six to eight weeks of being behind the wheel to pass a road test isn't enough time. You need to be consistently driving. This is not a spectator sport. You have to be behind the wheel and driving the, the vehicle. You can't, you can't watch somebody else and learn how to drive. It doesn't work like that. And as well, the difficulty of learning how to drive, it takes all of the intelligence of you being able to drive. And there's four of them physical intelligence, cognitive intelligence, uh, spiritual intelligence, and men are, uh, what's the other one? There's mental, mental intelligence. It's, it's the heart intelligence. Okay. You need those. So physically you have to be able to drive the vehicle and coordinate all that stuff. You have to think, you have to know all the traffic signs. You have to know all the road pavement markings. Okay. You have to have determination because it's going to get you down. You got to have fortitude. You got to complete the mission. Okay. Sort of thing. So there's lots going on. Uh, in terms of learning how to drive and you know I just if you're telling me that you're like six to eight weeks and I just got in the car and I want to pass a road test if you fail ah, uh, you didn't practice enough period okay my friend Tim running commentary is not easy to do practice it before road test more detail is better yes exactly what Tim said <laughs> it is not easy to do and take it from somebody like me who has all the experience that I have when I'm trying to shoot videos in the car and I'm trying to drive the car and talk at the same time, I make mistakes. I'll be, I'll be right now. I will be right up front with you. I make mistakes and I have to reshoot it again because, as Tim said, it running commentary is tough. It's tough, okay. But if you can do it and you can practice it, you're going to be much, much better prepared for your road test. Uh, ba 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 ba. Okay. Had my little diatribe. Joseph, thanks very much. I used uh, your videos to do my practice and I passed my road test on the first attempt. That's how I got my UA driver's license. Excellent, excellent. Joseph, that is awesome. Uh, there in the United Arab Emirates, you passed your road test. Lisa, are you allowed to drive with sunglasses? Yes, you are, Lisa. Okay, if, if, you are, if your eyes are photosensitive and you have difficulty seeing in bright sunlight, then wear sunglasses. And on that note, I forgot to make this point previously. If you have contact lenses or you wear prescription glasses, make sure that you take your prescription glasses uh, because if you have to wear those to drive, it will be a requirement on your license and it's part of your pre-trip inspection on your car because if it's on your license and you don't have your glasses to drive, you will be denied your road test, okay? Bold. Underline in italics. <laughs> you will be denied your road test if you don't have your prescription glasses with you. So make sure that that is part of your pre-trip inspection and things that you need to take with you down to road test day. Okay, uh, Joella, what uh, can you tell me what I can do to ease with my nerves? Okay, so Joella, the one video that I would suggest that you have a look at, uh, have a look at the uh, 10 tips to pass your road test. I was trying to remember the name of the video. So a couple of things you can do to relax. Okay, first of all, do your pre-trip inspection, make sure your vehicle is up to snuff. Because, and the reason I tell you to do a pre-trip inspection, this is another thing that I didn't say uh, during the presentation. When you go to the test center, you park in the space, and unless signs prohibit you, back into the parking space, okay? Don't go in and drive into the space because you're gonna have to back out and that just that's just too hard at the beginning because your nerves are high that's when you're high so you want to drive out of the space so unless signs prohibit you back into the space uh you know you've done your pre-trip inspection you've cleaned yourself up <coughs> you're half an hour early before your trip 20 minutes to a half an hour early for your scheduled appointment <coughs> excuse me you go inside you check in Okay, you've got your paperwork with you. You've got three pieces identification. Now, unfortunately, I had a student say to me uh, there in the States that they were denied their road test because they didn't have their social security number, which I don't know. That seems a little odd, but it happened. Okay, so you need to take three pieces of identification. 
okay make sure you have a driver's license and then two others a passport social security number uh, other uh, government issued ID so make sure you have that identification when you check in bring money because it's gonna cost you money to take your road test all right and then after you check in everything's good you know where the car is parked uh, make sure you go to the toilet okay because it's really tough to finish a road test with your legs crossed because you gotta you gotta go pee okay so make sure you go to the toilet before your road test and then come out you got a couple of minutes go for a little walk maybe just around the building don't go very far okay come back stay near the car and then the driving examiner comes out and the driving examiner is going to do a little pre-trip inspection okay they're gonna check the lights they're gonna check the signals they're gonna check the horn the brake lights uh, they're gonna check the general condition of the vehicle they're gonna get in the vehicle they're gonna make sure that the seatbelt on the passenger side works so this is it this is why it's so important for you to do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle before you go down for the road test and as well if you go with the driving school make sure that you ask the driving instructor did he or she do a pre-trip inspection on your car on their car before you show up for road test day because those, they're not they're not immune to having something happen to them either so make sure everything's working the brake lights and those types of things okay and Corey's put the video up there that will show you how to do a complete uh, pre-trip inspection on your vehicle all right uh, Carrie yep yeah okay <laughs> and Carrie's got the quote there my one of my favorite quote quotes from Churchill uh, failure is not final Six, uh, no, I'm trying to get it correct in my head. Failure is not fatal. Success is not final. It is the courage to continue to carry on. Okay, so great, great quote there. Uh, Saba, can examiners make us nervous and judge if we get upset while driving? Uh, Saba, your, your point is to zone in. Okay, and if you haven't learned this yet, I encourage every one of you to learn go to your happy place i know that's so cliche go to your flipping happy place it's not even your happy place it's it's your zone place you are flipping in the zone it's like when i do these live streams i'm in the zone okay i'm here i'm looking in the camera there's nobody else in my room my daughter's standing over there uh, and she's doing something i don't know what she's doing but i can't see her it's not even my daughter it's my son because i'm in the zone I am like, I got like these blinders on and I am doing what I need to do. And this is what you need to do on your road test. That person sitting over there with a clipboard, they are insignificant. You go in, you put your blinders on, you get in your zone and you do what you need to do. You drive that car, you drive it safely, you read the road signs and you pass your road test screw that person over there whatever he or she is writing on that clipboard you are in the flipping zone do it don't let them distract you okay it's the same thing with what i'm doing here my son is over here making hand signs at me trying to get me to to look at him i'm not looking at him i'm looking at you guys because we're gonna pass our road test and we're gonna be successful so if you got nerves that's what you gotta do you gotta find your zone okay <laughs> whatever you do if you do Lego and you can get in the zone for 10 hours you gotta emulate that when you go for your road test you gotta do the same thing get in the zone don't let other people distract you do what you need to do to take away the examiner's right to fail you okay excellent all right Lisa all right Patrick I'm nervous what do I do to pass the driving test when I haven't been driving in Buffalo Minnesota okay Patrick, you got to where have have you been driving somewhere else, Patrick? Uh, just to answer that question. Brenda, I have a problem with turns too fast. All right, so Brenda, uh, right turn should be anywhere between 8 and 10 8 and 12 miles an hour. Left turn should be anywhere sort of 15 to 20 miles an hour, depending on how big the turn is and how big the corner is, okay? Uh, Joella, thanks for the info. You're awesome. <laughs> thank you, Joella. You're awesome too, and thank you for being here and part of the uh, smart driver community that's awesome uh, Lisa Ontario do you have to two-point reserve reverse around a corner okay so Lisa as I said you can be guaranteed of three maneuvers on a road test parallel parking reverse stall parking bar backing into a parking space and three-point turn you can be guaranteed of that now you should be able to do two-point reverse turn 
because it's up to the examiner. If he or she feels that they want you to do a two point reverse turn, then you gotta do a two point reverse turn for your test. But again, you're in the zone. They're not throwing you, okay? I'm in the zone. I've done a two point reverse turn. I flip and know how to do that. I can, I can knock that off all day long. It's like he ordering hamburgers at Burger King. Get her done, okay? If you practice, because there's no surprises on the test, you just gotta drive around. You gotta do parallel park, reverse stall park, three-point turn, and maybe a two-point reverse turn or park along the curb. You know what needs to be on the test, and if you've done all the work, then it's not a big deal when the examiner tells you to do it, okay? There we go. Uh, Vascaran, can you explain about calculation? Uh, which calculation are you talking about, uh, Vascaran? Okay, uh, Maxi, thank you. When you try to merge onto the highway and it's during a very busy period, to the point it's difficult to merge, what do you do? Excellent question, Maxi. Uh, when you're merging onto the highway or anywhere else, okay, first and foremost, communicate. Communicate well in advance. So say for example that you're merging onto a freeway or an interstate, even when you before you get onto the acceleration lane, get that signal on, okay? Because lots of students will say to me, and I've been in big trucks and I've been in cars with them, and they say, oh, hey, there's no space for me to merge over, and I look over and the, the signal's not on. And I'm like, you know, if you put your signal on, they'll actually move out of the way for you and create a space for you so you can move over there. So it's it's so important to put your signal on and communicate. All right, you get down the ramp, you get up to speed, the posted speed limit for the purposes of a road test. And if it's still busy, it's still crowded, and nobody's giving you a space, then crowd that left side of the lane. Don't move out of the lane, but move over to the left side. Because as soon as you start moving your vehicle over to the left side and crowding that left side of the lane, the other drivers think that you're coming over. And as soon as they think that you're coming over, they're not going to crash into you. They're going to create a space. They're going to let off the throttle. They're going to do what they need to do to help you out and move and create a space. So if they're not moving over, just crowd that side of the lane and, they, and, they, and a space will open up. That's what will happen. All right. Uh, Patrick, I was driving in the summer, uh, in the fall, then I had a knee, then I had knee surgery. Uh, yeah, you should be all right, uh, Patrick, uh, if you've had similar experience. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Maxi, excellent. How do you deal with roundabouts? Yes. Roundabouts are beginning to make uh, inroads into the driving landscape. Pardon the pun. There was a pun there. Inroads. Get it? Inroads? <laughs> okay. So they're here. Now, roundabouts are just a big yield intersection. Okay. They're like a four way yield sign. Now, when you come up to a roundabout, signal as you would at a conventional intersection. If you're going to turn right, put your signal on to turn to the right. If you're going to turn left, put your signal on to turn to the left. Now, remember, for those of us in North America, we drive on the side, right side of the road. Uh, roundabouts move in a counterclockwise direction. For those of you who drive on the left, they move in a clockwise direction. So make sure you're going the right way. Okay, and you have to go all the way around the roundabout to turn left. Okay, you can't go into the intersect into the roundabout and turn left right away. Okay, you there's a reason it's round around. Okay, you got to go around the roundabout. I've seen people do that, and if you watch uh, the roundabout video here, you'll actually see somebody do that, which is pretty funny. Okay, um, so they were coming into the roundabout instead of going right around the roundabout to make a left, they just drove through and made the left. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then you just go into the roundabout, go where you're going to turn left or right. And then if practicable, that means if you can, signal out of the roundabout. That's all you need to do. All right. Uh, if you've got multi-lane roundabouts in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test, uh, definitely practice on those. And I would encourage you for the purposes of your road test to stay on the outside lane, okay? Now, for those of you who might be watching on the replay, uh, if you like what you see here, hit that thumbs up, consider subscribing here on the channel, and definitely leave us a comment and we'll help you out to be successful and pass your road test. All right, uh, just bear with me here one sec. I can see that I've got my goofy auto focus is going in and out here, so I'm just going to change that uh, and I'm going to set that so it stays. There we go. Okay. Jolie, uh, Joila, Ila. I'm not saying that right. I do apologize about that. I don't have a problem on the freeway. It's only when I'm approaching a intersection. That's when a panic button is pushed. 
All right, so one of the things you can do, Joella, is to just relax a little bit, start working sooner. So start working a block back and then sort of talk yourself through it. Okay, I'm going to approach the intersection. I'm slowing down. I'm, I'm moving up to the intersection. I'm signaling to turn right or left if you're going to be doing that. All right, so just talk yourself through it and you'll find by the process of talking yourself through it uh, that that will alleviate some of your nerves and anxiety around approaching intersections. The other thing you can do in terms of uh, intersections as well, work on some of the intersections in residential areas and whatnot, and that way uh, then you can bolt, uh, build up to more complex intersections as well. Okay, and I can see that this goofy thing is still not uh, in focus. Uh, apologies about that. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Introvert, hello you, how are you my friend? Maxi, if during the test I drive through the green light but another driver beat the red light and nearly bone me, will I fail the test? I'm not really following that. Balagan, is this for the UK or the US? Uh, this will work for both the UK and the US. Obviously it's driving on the right side of the road for the most part here in North America, but uh, most of these principles will work for driving on the left side of the road as well. And uh, my plan is to go to Britain in uh, April and shoot some videos in Britain as well to help you out there in uh, the UK and whatnot. Uh, Lisa, I was having a panic attack when I was driving on the bends and I was breathing through it. Yes, and the other thing is if you're having a panic attack, Lisa, then definitely take a break, okay? Just park the vehicle in a safe place and take a break, whether that's a gas station or a parking lot or just on a residential street or something like that. Definitely take a break, okay? Uh, Saba, the reason I got upset on my last exam was the examiner was asking me if I remember what he just said because I wasn't saying anything other than okay. Okay, so Saba, you got to realize that the driving examiner is simply looking for confirmation. So, for example, if the driving examiner tells you to turn left at the next controlled intersection, you just say turn left at the next controlled intersection. Just reiterate back to the examiner what he or she said, and they're just confirming that you, that you heard what they said. Because the other thing is, okay, most of the time, driving examiners are not going to trick you. Okay, they're not there to trick you. They know you're nervous. They know you've got some anxiety around the test, and they know that you don't have a really high skill level in terms of driving. So they're not going to trick you because they're going to risk their own safety. So therefore, they're going to give you lots of notice when you're going to turn left or right. Okay, they're going to say at the next controlled intersection, turn right. The reason that they say controlled intersection for the most part, some won't, some will. The reason they use that is that they want you to want to understand if you can figure out uh, what kind of intersection you're dealing with and that you're going to do the best thing that you can. Okay, I'm still, it's, okay. This is weird. <laughs> is it out of focus on YouTube? Because on my software here on the computer, it's not out of focus, but it looks like it's out of focus on the preview. Uh, maybe it's just me. Maybe somebody can let me know whether it's in focus or not. Okay. Uh, introvert. Can I own a old bus when the seats have been removed that is not used for commercial use or more than 30 years old? Uh, introvert, you can, you can have an old bus, uh, as long as you're not driving it for commercial purposes, then you can drive it with your passenger bus, as long as it only has a single axle on the back. It's not a dual axle. Okay. And, uh, who else here? Maxi, what is a brake check? When is braking legal and when is it not? Okay. Uh, Maxi, brake check is aggressive driving. It's when another driver thinks that you did something wrong to him or her and they will drive past you, they'll drive in front of you and they'll nail on the brakes. It's called a brake check, okay? And the reason they do that is to try and get back, to, back at you. It's an act of vengeance and it's incredibly dangerous uh, driving on the roadways, okay? Uh, okay, Katie says it's okay. <laughs> Mertuni says it's slightly, but it's not bad. Yes, it's very focused. I can see you well. Okay, excellent. Okay, then I'll just leave it alone for the rest of the presentation here because we're almost done. Another 15 minutes. I do apologize. Uh, it seems kind of weird. 
Uh, Martina, during the driving test, should I turn right on the red with my driving school whenever I stop at a red waiting for light to turn green or right turn people honk like crazy? Yes, they do. My friend Blessed, how are you? Bet you're enjoying warm weather where you are. Okay, Martina, on a road test, okay, so you can turn right on a red light and there's a video here and Corey, I'll put that up for you. For the purposes of a road test, you don't have to. Okay, if you want to wait for the green light for the purposes of the road test, you can wait for the green light. But you can turn right on a red light too. But it's imperative. <laughs> stop at the correct stopping position behind the stop line, behind the crosswalk line, or at the edge of the two roads don't meet. But at most, almost all stop lights, you're going to have a stop line. So you're going to stop behind the stop line give way to all other road users, pedestrians, other traffic and whatnot. And then after the way is cleared, then you can turn right. But again, you don't have to, you can wait for the green light to proceed on making a right hand turn for the purposes of a road test. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Corey says it looks good as well. Lisa, uh, depending on where you are from, some places won't let you turn on a red. Uh, no, Lisa, it's not illegal. And again, as Lisa says, and I'll say this, and I encourage you to do this, if you are not taking driving lessons with a driving instructor, take a practice road test seven to 10 days before your road test. And you're gonna have to book that about three weeks out from your road test because driving schools are busy. And he or she will be able to give you the specific information about whether you should wait for the green or whether you can turn right on a red light. There is some nuance, some specific details about where you're taking your road test in the, excuse me, where you're taking your road test in the world, who is taking, who is the examiner that's going to take you out about whether you can pass on a, on a, or turn right on a red light or not. Some other things as well, some other details and whatnot, a driving instructor will be able to give you that specific information. They will also be able to give you the specific information about where driving examiners are most likely to take you to parallel park, where they're most likely to take you to three point turn. Uh, driving examiners will know all of that information and they'll know the specific route where you're going to go. They'll also know whether you're gonna go out on the highway. They'll know whether you're gonna go out on the freeway or not. not. So it is money well spent to, to hire a driving instructor and to go out with him or her for an hour and ha get him or her to give you the specific details that you need to ensure that you're going to be successful on your road test, okay? And they will, he or she will be able to answer those questions for you about whether you can turn right on a red light or whether you should wait for the green, okay? Because those are specific, inf that's specific information that's going to change a little bit depending on where you are uh, taking your road test in the world, okay? Pandy, hey, can we turn left on a blinking yellow arrow? Uh, yes, you can, and that's an excellent question, but remember, for the purposes of a road test, red and yellow mean the same thing. If you can stop, get the vehicle stopped in the correct stopping position for the purposes of a road test, okay? I, I've got some a lot of dash cam footage here of uh, going through yellow lights and whatnot, and I'll show you which ones are fails and which ones are pass, because if you, if you enter an intersection on a yellow light and you are still, the vehicle is still in the intersection, so for example, when you go into the intersection on a yellow, the driving examiner is looking up through the top of the windshield and they're looking up like this. And if they see the light go red and you're in the intersection, that's an automatic fail on a road test. So I know that you may have to lock up the tires, but if you can get it stopped at all, make sure you stop for yellow light for the purposes of a road test. And as well, before you nail on the brakes coming into the intersection, make sure that you look in the rear view mirror to make sure nobody's you know, in your trunk that's gonna be farther in your trunk after you nail on the brakes, okay? In other words, protect yourself from getting rear-ended for the purposes of uh, keeping yourself safe, which is more important on a road test. Okay, uh, Lisa, do you still need to bring money with you if your G2 is paid for when I paid for my G1? I paid for G2 too, but I do, I have to pay for anything after that. Okay, Lisa, I don't know the answer to that question, but I would strongly encourage you to have money with you just in case. And as well, 
Uh, you may have paid for the road test. So everybody else take note of this as well. Uh, you have to pay for the road test. So there's a fee for taking the road test. Usually it's about $50, depending on where you are. I know here in British Columbia, it's $50. And then after you go out for the road test and you come back, if you're successful, when you are successful on passing your road test, uh, there's a fee for issue, issuing, giving you your license. Okay, so it's a $30 fee or something else. So, <laughs> you know, it's de-scaling. They just break everything down. So in the end, you're paying a whole bunch of money. It's not like you're just going to pay $110 and they'll give you your license at the end. No, they're going to charge you 50 bucks to take the road test and they're going to charge you another 30 or 40 bucks to actually send you and give you your license. All right, so know that as well. So make sure that you have money because you don't want to get there and not have money and not get your license because you didn't pay for something. All right, uh, Joella. I always stop on a yellow light, but other drivers get upset. And and they are. And know that that you know, practicing for your road test is a different animal than actually learning how to drive, right? Because once you get your license, you're gonna drive the with the flow of traffic, you're not gonna do the posted speed limit. Uh, you're gonna most of the time you're gonna go through yellow lights, you're not gonna stop because somebody's gonna climb into your trunk. Not in a good way either. Okay? So know that for the purposes of the road test that you're going against all of the conventions of social driving and it's tough because other people honk other people give you the finger they tell you you're number one all those types of things so know that for the purposes of a road test all right Stephen, hello my friend uh mary for emergency stops hazard lights on before signal or signal before hazard lights uh maxi uh signal before hazard so once you get off to the side of the road and get the vehicle stopped then activate the hazard lights okay jonathan uh, what do you mean before signal when you're turning, helping, pulling to the curb? Okay, so Jonathan, uh, she's asking about a specific maneuver that is required in the province of Ontario here in Canada. Uh, they make you do an emergency stop. Uh, so essentially, they make you pull off the side of the road, uh, bring the vehicle to a stop, secure the vehicle by applying the parking brake, putting it into park, and then activating the four-way flashers. Essentially, what you're simulating is you're, you're simulating an emergency stop, that there was an emergency vehicle that went by or whatnot. Uh, so there are, as we said, as I said, about driving instructors and taking a practice driving test with a local driving school is, is that they will give you the nuances. So emergency stops are particular to the province of Ontario here in Canada. Ohio maneuverability test is particular to the state of Ohio, the Buckeye in the United States. And then California, uh, the nickname for California is escaping me. I'm thinking the Sunshine State, but that's Florida. Uh, so <laughs> you're going to tell me and I'm going to go, oh yeah, of course that's what it is. Uh, so, and then California has backing up along a curve for about, uh, 10 vehicle lengths. So those are specific to different places that they have their own specific, uh, exercise or maneuver for the test for you to be successful there and get your license. Okay. So Lisa, it was $160 for G1 and G2, it's $53.75 for the road test. And yeah, the other thing I might check, Lisa, like I said, there's probably a fee for actually issue, issuing your license after you've passed the road test. Okay, uh, Maxi, signal to pull to the side to stop. Yes, and then Maxi, once you get the vehicle stopped, then activate the, uh, um, the, the four-way flashers. Uh, Jonathan, it's okay to turn on your hazards, then pull over when you're pulling over to the curb as long as you do it safely. Uh, not for the purposes of the road test, Jonathan, uh, in Ontario for the purposes of the road test. And actually, Corey, there's a video there. You could just put that video up and that'll explain it. Uh, you have to put your, you have to signal that you're moving to the curb first before you put your four race flashes on. And I'll tell you a story about that, Jonathan, uh, here in Vernon, where we do the road test for class one, uh, you go up out of town to the South here and we, you go up dump Hill. It's a big mountain. So you go over the mountain and then you turn left across the highway and come back up this little two lane skinny road and then you turn back out onto the road, out onto the highway. So you're in the truck with an inexperienced driver coming out onto a roadway in a tractor trailer going downhill with trucks screaming down this hill at 120 kilometers an hour. And the first time I did it, I said to the student, I said, okay, put your four way flashers on to indicate to traffic behind you that you're going slow when you pull out. Because as a truck driver, that's what I would do. Is if, if, if I was loaded, I'm pulling out onto a highway from a dead stop 
I would put my four ways on to indicate the traffic behind me that I'm going slowly. It's a defensive posturing movement. Okay, so I said to the student, I said, put your four-way flashes on and then pull out and go. So the student did that on a road test. The driving examiner said, dinged him five points for not signaling. <laughs> so this is why I'm telling for the emergency uh, maneuver that you have to do in the province of Ontario. You've got to signal first, and then once you bring the vehicle to a stop, then you put your hazards on. So again, this is another thing where it's different in the driving world than it is for what you would do for the purposes of your road test. Julio, when turning left or right, is it illegal to turn on to the far lane? Uh, it's not, but you're going to be dinged about 20 points for not turning into the right lane, Julio. Uh, so on multi-lane roads, right lane to right lane, left lane to left lane. you got to do that. Okay? Maxi, uh, when parallel parking, are they very particular about the distance from other cars and distance from the curb? Okay, so when you're from the other car... Pretend that there's a person standing between you and the other car. That's how far you have to be from the car. And then again, you have to park sort of 15 to 25 centimeters from the curb, okay? So the curb, usually you've got that cement and you've got a bit of cement here and then it meets the bitumen. You wanna be kind of on that line is ideal. If you're too far, don't try to adjust it. Just take the two demerit points that you're gonna get for being too far away from the curb. That's fine. Okay, that's going to work for you. All right. Uh, Baskerin, how long the green light will appear? Uh, most green lights are anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes, depending on what intersection you're at. Okay, it's going to vary a lot. Joella, I always cover my brake. Is that a good thing uh, to do? I believe in safety. Yes, if Joella, that is excellent. It is defensive posturing. Corey will put up with a video for you on how to cover the brake. And if you have a hazard that's potentially there, something that could potentially do damage or you could come into conflict with, yes, cover the brake on the vehicle until you pass and then can carry on with your life. Okay, excellent defensive posturing, covering the brake. It's a fundamental skill of driving and being safe. Uh, Lisa, do you have to talk to the examiner because I can't talk and I drive and I lose my force? Uh, no, you don't have to listen. Uh, you don't have to talk to the driving examiner, Lisa, but as one other smart driver said here on the live stream just reiterate back to what her, she, him or her what they said to you what directions they give so if they said turn left at the next intersection you'll say turn left at the next intersection and just reiterate back to them so that they know that you they that you heard them in terms of the instructions okay uh carrie rick are, you are truly blessing in my life your teaching is helping me to learn and encourages me to improve Thank you so much, Carrie. I'm glad that we can help you out. And I think you sent me an email and I need to respond to that. I do apologize for the lateness of that. Uh, Maxi, no, you cannot use a dash cam or any recording devices for the purposes of the road test. Okay, final question. Excellent. All right. Thank you everybody for participating in the live stream. It's been very busy today. Had lots of focus. Uh, my son finally gave up after about 15 minutes of, of mocking me here in the background uh, and is not having a go. So here he comes again. Anyway, uh, if you're watching on the replay, thumbs up, leave a comment. We're more than happy to help you out to pass your road test and to give you videos that you should have a look at uh, for the skills and uh, maneuvers that you need to do for the purposes of passing a road test. Uh, and that's for any license, whether that's a passenger vehicle or a commercial vehicle. We can help you be successful on your road test. And again, the video that I got up this week, uh, the questions you should ask a truck driving school if you're considering a CDL license or a CDL permit. Have a look at that video as well. Uh, Lisa sent me an email. Okay, I'll have a look for that, Lisa. DC, hey there, I have my road test in a couple of months, but I don't own a car and had only 10 hours in car lessons. I doubt it's enough. How can I keep in touch with driving without a car to practice in? Uh, DC, you don't have any neighbors, any grandparents, uncles, aunts, anybody that you can harangue to let you drive their car and drive them around so you can get some more driving practice. Uh, th those are the things that I can suggest uh, that you can do. You don't necessarily have to own a car. You just have to know other people that own a car that you could potentially uh, get one. All right. So, excellent. Odie, my friend, what should I do when parking your vehicle on any hill? All right, so Odie, excellent. We'll end on this point. Hill parking. 
three in one rule. So everything is in towards the shoulder of the road except uphill with a curb. And that is out, away, okay? So you turn your wheels out and then allow the vehicle to roll back so the back of the tire uh, rests on the curb. Think of it like Superman, up, up, and away, okay? So three-in-one rule for hill parking. Everything is in towards the shoulder except for uphill with a curb. So if you forgot, you had a brain cramp or whatever, uh, just turn the wheels in towards the shoulder and you should be okay. Uh, you might lose a few points, but it'll be fine. Uh, okay, Katie, I'll definitely get that back. To Katie was the one that sent me the email. I do apologize about that. All right. Uh, Lisa, when should you put your parking brake on? Uh, Lisa, you should put your parking brake on every time you park the vehicle and secure it and you're going to leave. That's what you need to do. All right. Excellent. So thank you, everybody. Very busy uh, watching on the replay. Thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Uh, and great questions. If you've had a road test in the last couple of weeks and were successful, congratulations on that. And if you weren't, remember, failure isn't final. And if you have a road test coming up in the next couple of weeks, good luck on that. And remember. And remember. <laughs> See, I had a brain cramp. <laughs> Pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.